Hello, today we are talking about Heights Cellars. Yep. Okay. Joe Heights was born in 1919 in Illinois where he was raised on a small farm. He always wanted to be a veterinarian, but he graduated high school during the Great Depression and he had a full ride to the University of Illinois, which didn't have a veterinary program yet. So he ended up going to college for agriculture. He attended college for two years until the start of World War II whenever he joined the United States Air Force. During his time in the Air Force, he was stationed in Fresno, California, where he decided to stay after the war was over and attend UC Davis. He ended up graduating in 1951 with his master's in enology, had a few short stints at wineries around California, then ended up at Buyu Vineyards, where for seven years he worked under Andre Teleshev, one of California's most influential winemakers. Then in 1961, Joe and his wife Alice purchased their first vineyard, 8.5 acres just south of St. Helena. The property dates way back to the 1800s and was previously owned by Leon Brendel, Fremark Abbey's very first winemaker. This is important because he only made one grape, a very obscure Italian varietal called Grignolino. It's absolutely delicious and Heights still produces it to this day. Anyways, Joe is a true pioneer in California winemaking. In 1966, he became the very first person to put a single vineyard designate on a label, Martha's Vineyard. He went on to produce a lot more single vineyards from Trailside Vineyard, Linda Falls Vineyard, and he used to produce Bella Oaks Vineyard until 2007 when the rights were sold exclusively to Staglin. Another thing that set Heights apart is Joe's winemaking. He was the first to prioritize acidity and freshness whenever everyone else in California was only focusing on alcohol and tannin. This is why I've personally fallen in love with Heights. And Heights Cellars is still improving. In April of 2018, they were actually sold to the Lawrence family. This is good. Their team's winemaker, Brittany Sherwood, has brought in more modern equipment and has started working on converting their 425 acres of CCOF organic certified vineyards towards biodynamics. So only good places to go. Now to the dirt, or vineyards, whatever you want to call it. As I said in the last video, Martha's Vineyard was the first wine ever to have a single vineyard designation on the label. Martha's Vineyard. Okay. This all started in 1966 when they made an agreement with Tom May and his wife Martha to let Heights Cellars source some Cabernet Sauvignon from their small vineyard in Oakville. Over the years, Martha's Vineyard has gained extreme prestige and for good reason. It has fertile, well-drained soil and afternoon shade provided by the Mayacamas mountain range, which allows for a much later harvest. This later harvest grants the ability to leave the grapes on the vine much longer than other sites. It creates a concentration of flavor and a softening of tannin that's rarely possible in Napa. Historically, Martha's Vineyard is the last vineyard in Napa to be picked. Legendary? This vineyard is entirely planted with the exclusive Martha's clone of Cabernet Sauvignon that is planted nowhere else in the world. It is known for producing small berries with an intensely purple hue, extra concentrated flavors, and also a distinct like minty character. The wine is then fermented and put into neutral oak barrels where it settles for a year. Next, all these barrels are tasted and the best ones are chosen to be further aged in 100% new French Limousin oak wide-grained barrels. Anyways, three years of barrel aging later, Martha's Vineyard is bottled where it rests in the cellar for another year before being released to us. I could also go into Trailside Vineyard, Linda Falls Vineyard, or Lot C91. If you'd like to see that, just let me know in the comments below. And now the best part, my opinion. So I kind of think about wine in two different ways as a sommelier. Value for money now and investment opportunity later. Heights started out at the controversially high price of $9 a bottle and today is being released at $250. So the investment opportunity is very clear. At my previous job, we sold Heights Martha's Vineyard 2017 for $700 a bottle, and I managed to sell all three within a month. But I have to tell you, as an average income kind of person, their Heights, just Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon, is my favorite everyday drinker. They have it at my local Harris Teeter and Total Wine, probably a lot more stores, at like $40 to $50 a bottle. This is their base level Cabernet, but honestly, I've blind tasted it before and I guessed it was way more expensive than it was. And that's very exciting because it's not often that you can have the same wine that's a great investment over time to have in your cellar, but it's also delicious to drink on a day-to-day -day basis. I've also come to respect what they do so much because Heights Cellars, especially Martha's Vineyard, 
is probably the most consistently in all of my clients' collections. And I fully believe this is because they prioritize acidity and freshness in their Napa Valley Cabernet, and not a lot of people do that. It makes sense that my clients who generally drink Napa Valley Cabernet would have Martha's Vineyard, but it speaks for itself when people who only drink Old World wine also have Martha's Vineyard in their cellar. Like they break their rule for one wine and it's this one. And that's Hyde Cellars. Cheers. What do people say here? Comment, like, subscribe, in whatever order you wish, there will be more.